Okay, guys, we're going to talk about the types of chemical reactions. Now, we're going to discuss only five basic types of chemical reactions here. Uh, there are a lot of different types of reactions, but we're going to keep it simple and keep it um, confined to five basic types of reactions. Um, what we want to be able to do at the end of this, we should be able to uh, categorize the reactants, um, the reactions by the reactants, okay? And we want to be able to predict the product. So we want to look at what we're starting with and figure out what type of reaction we have, and when, then we want to be able to predict the products. Um, we'll get into more predicting the products in the next PowerPoint. But right now, we're going to look at the reactions. Now, the first type of reaction that we have is called a synthesis reaction. Uh, it's also called a uh, composition reaction, uh, combination reaction. Uh, what we're doing here is in the reactants, uh, we have more than one of them. Okay, It can be an element or a compound, uh, so it's just more than one thing in the reactants. And then in the product, what it does is it only has one compound. So no matter what we start with in the reactants, in the product is always going to be one compound. Here's the basic type of this reaction. Uh, we start with A and X, uh, any type of um, element or compound, and they combine to make one thing. The main thing here is that product we're looking at. We're seeing that the product is going to be one thing in a combination reaction or a synthesis reaction. They are making one thing. So no matter how many reactants we have, the product is always going to be one. Now, the A uh, is the cation and the X is the anion. Uh, so here we see we have the formation of an ionic compound. Now, here's an example of it. We're looking at it visually. We have uh, two things that uh, obviously the bird eats the worm and it becomes one thing. Okay. Here, looking at some chemicals, we have rubidium and sulfur. And we see that the rubidium and sulfur are going to combine to make rubidium sulfide. So we have these two elements that are coming together to make one product. Then we have magnesium and oxygen. And we see that magnesium and oxygen are going to combine to make magnesium oxide. Okay, And we have sodium and chlorine, which are synthesizing to make sodium chloride. And then we have magnesium and fluorine that are synthesizing and making magnesium fluoride. The main thing here, guys, we see that they are coming together, uh, especially when we have two elements. That's normally all they're going to do. So they're going to come together, have, they're going to synthesize, and they're going to make one product. What we should see here is that no matter what we start with, we're always ending up with one product. Uh, here in these examples, what we can see, the difference in them is that now we're dealing with compounds. Uh, and we have our calcium oxide in water uh, produces calcium hydroxide. We have sulfur dioxide in water produces, um, we see that we have uh, sulfurous acid. And then we have calcium oxide and sulfur dioxide producing, producing calcium sulfite. Okay, but again guys, no matter what we start with, we're finishing with only one product. Now, a decomposition reaction is the exact opposite of a synthesis reaction. Uh, usually, it's going to require some energy, uh, either some heat or some electricity. Uh, we're putting energy into it to break them apart. Now, the, reaction, the reactants are only going to be one compound. Since it's the opposite of synthesis, uh, we're going to start with one thing, one compound. And the product is going to break up into more than one thing. Uh, you can think of a decomposition, decomposing, breaking up. We see that here's the basic reaction. We have our anion and cation, uh, and they are separating back into their elemental form or back into their compounds. An example of this, we see we have the egg, and the egg breaks apart, and now we have an egg and a turtle. So we have two things. Okay, some more examples of decomposition. We have the decomposition of water. So water is made of hydrogen and oxygen, and it breaks apart into hydrogen and oxygen. So it was water, one thing, now it broke up into two things. Here we have calcium carbonate, and it decomposes into uh, calcium oxide and cal or, uh, carbon dioxide. And then we have calcium hydroxide, and it decomposes into calcium oxide and water. 
main thing here looking at these reactants whatever we start with if it's one compound and we're having a chemical reaction it is going to be a decomposition reaction oh and forgot one thing carbonic acid and we see it breaks up into carbon dioxide and water okay moving on to our next type of reaction we have a single replacement reaction and here what happened an element replaces a similar element in the compound uh, you can kind of circle similar and right beside that that similar meaning that metals are going to replace metals and nonmetals are going to replace nonmetals. Uh, in our reactants we're going to have one element and one compound and in our products we're going to have one element and one compound. And what's going to happen is we see our equation here we have A plus BX produces B plus AX so we see that the metals um, the cations have switched places and now A is bonded to X and B is by itself uh, here's an example of a uh, nonmetal or an anion replacing uh, each other. We see the Y replaces the X, uh, and that X is by itself. Kind of just bumps it off. They switch partners, and then you have um, one element alone. Okay, some examples of these. We see a visual example here. They're just switching partners. Okay, looking at the uh, elements, we have zinc and hydrochloric acid so we see that we have an element and a compound and they're going to switch places so the zinc comes in to the uh, be bonded with the chlorine and then hydrogen is by itself now guys we look at H2 uh, this is still an element even though it has two hydrogens uh, because we can't get hydrogen any other way so it's always going to be H2 the diatomics even though they're written with a two subscript they are still elemental uh, diatomics uh, the second one we have magnesium and lead to nitrate which we see that the magnesium switches places with the lead and it produces magnesium nitrate and lead uh, and we have chlorine and potassium bromide and the chlorine is going to switch places with the bromine these uh, nonmetals replace nonmetals so here we go from ca uh, chlorine gas and potassium bromide to potassium chloride and bromine gas next type of reaction that we have is a double replacement reaction this is a reaction with um, two similar elements are going to switch places remember similar means metals replace metals nonmetals replace nonmetals uh, the reactants are going to be two compounds the products are going to produce two different compounds uh, the basic type of this reaction we have a x plus b y produces b x plus a y so we see that the A and the B have switched places. They've switched partners. A uh, visual example of it here, just switching out some hats. Um, let's look at the chemical one. So here we have barium chloride plus sodium sulfate. And we see that in the reaction, um, the barium and the uh, sodium switch places. And we have sodium chloride and barium sulfate. In our next reaction, we have iron sulfide and hydrochloric acid. And we see that the, it kind of looks better if we say that the chlorine and the sulfur switch places. Because now we see, we see we have iron bonded to chlorine and hydrogen is now bonded to sulfur. Uh, we see that the, it creates iron chloride and hydrosulfuric acid. Okay. Here we have hydrochloric acid and sodium uh, hydroxide. And we see that the hydrogen is going to switch places with the sodium and you see it produces sodium chloride and water. Uh, you can picture water as this, if it makes a little more sense to you. Uh, that hydrogen came over and bumped to it, but obviously we have two hydrogens, H2 uh, and oxygen. And lastly, we have potassium iodide and lead to nitrate, which we see the potassiums um, switch places with the lead. So now the potassium is bonded to the nitrate and the lead's bonded to the iodide. Last reaction we're going to talk about is a combustion reaction. And this is when something combines with oxygen. Uh, it releases energy in the form of heat and light. Uh, the reactants are going to be oxygen plus a compound or an element. A uh, compound or element must be made of carbon and hydrogen, uh, and hydrogen only. Um, so what we see, we have hydrogen can combust and then we have organic compounds. The products are going to be hydrogen 
or water and uh, carbon dioxide. It depends on the type of combustion. Mainly what we're going to focus on here, combustion reactions have the products of carbon dioxide and water. Uh, looking at the reactants, we see that we have an organic molecule here, methane, with the oxygen gas. So we have something made of carbon and hydrogen, and it's reacting with oxygen, and it combusts. Uh, when you think of combustion, think of combustion engine. An example of this, we have the combustion of hydrogen, um, and it's combusting. It's, it's adding to oxygen, releases some energy, and creates water. And then we have the example of propane and oxygen. Um, propane is like what we have in our grills. Uh, main thing here, it produces carbon dioxide and water. Uh, we're not going to get into a lot of the exceptions like the combustion of hydrogen or anything else. We're mainly going to stick to combustion reactions that produce carbon dioxide and water as a product. Uh, so this is one key thing that you can look for when looking at all the different types of the reactions.